If you're looking to start out in architectural photography or architectural videography, you probably don't need as much as you think. I used to have my own business running photography and videography for architectural show homes before I became a qualified architect. So this video is full of some inside advice that I'm hoping will be able to inspire some of you. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Like I mentioned, I'm a practicing architect in the state of Western Australia and today we are talking about architectural photography and videography. I used to run my own business doing photography and videography. I used to have every single thing under the sun, all the big DSLR cameras, the heavy gimbals, the lighting kits, the works. It cost an absolute fortune and nobody can afford that starting out. So I thought I'd make this video today from an architect's perspective of what you actually need to start out and produce good quality work. Now, don't get me wrong, the big DSLR cameras and the gimbals are still required when you reach a certain point in your career. But when you're just starting out and trying to build up your portfolio, trying to build up your resume, you definitely don't need all of this. The first thing I recommend everybody starting out in the industry to do is go and do their research. Learn what people really like, learn what kind of videos are trending, learn what kind of photos are doing well, how they're color graded, where are they taken from, what angle lenses are they using. And then the same thing for videography. How are they positioning themselves, what angles are they getting, how do they actually move around in that video. So recently I've sold all of my photography and videography gear and moved away from that industry. I focused on my architectural career, but I still have to do a lot of social media presentation. Obviously I'm still on YouTube. So what I now do is only run around with a smartphone. I've purchased the best smartphone on the market, which was the Samsung S20 Ultra at the time. Now it's probably the S21 Ultra. If you're in this same boat, I would recommend getting a good smartphone to be able to do the following steps. A good smartphone would either be the top of the range Samsung S21 Ultra or the brand new iPhone 12 Pro Max. Both of these devices are relatively expensive and probably do cost just as much as a DSLR camera. However, most of you guys probably already have these devices in your pocket, so it is able to be able to transition into this industry a lot easier. So if you have just the phone, it's actually very possible to do architectural photography and videography, especially just handheld. You just have to know what you're doing. So if you're doing architectural photography, handheld is very easy, you just go around clicking. Videography is a different beast. With videography, you have to be able to understand how you're moving. So if you're doing architectural videography on a smartphone, just handheld, make sure you're always holding it with two hands and taking very slow movements. You don't wanna to step too far, you don't wanna to go too far. You only wanna be able to limit yourself in how far you can reach. So if you have to take 10 steps, don't do it. Reach, forward, move, take the next step, redo that shot because there is no way you're gonna get steady shots with a handheld device, no matter how good it is at the present moment in 2021. Secondly, if you're doing handheld shots, it's important to remember your frame rates. Now, I've stuffed this up multiple times and I still do it to date. So keep it in the back of your mind as much as you can. You wanna be filming at 60 frames per second at 4K. If your phone has the ability to go higher to 120 frames a second at 4K, then go to that but the minimum you wanna be filming at is 60 frames a second at 4K because it allows you to slow that footage down in post-production and actually work out all the kinks and any shakes that might come along with it. If you've managed to get a couple jobs just starting out with your smartphone handheld, you've made a little bit of money, now it's time to move on to the accessories. The first accessory I would recommend is the DJI OM4 gimbal. It is a very small, compact gimbal that has a very versatile amount of moves it makes any shot a lot smoother and a lot easier to create. So if, for example, you do need to take those long shots where you have to walk five, 10 meters in that one shot or follow a subject to create that shot you're looking for, well then now you have the possibility. Whereas previously as handheld, you wouldn't have had that possibility. It would just be too jumpy, too shaky and be unusable, unprofessional footage at least. If you do get a gimbal as well, it also gives you the added benefit of continuing to film only in 30 frames a second or 24 frames a second. This way you don't have to slow down motion, you, you don't have to make it seem unnatural. It can be a very natural fluid flow or very cinematic if you're filming at 24 frames a second. 
So the key advice there is make sure you know your frames per second and you know your movements. Again, similar to the previous advice, it's important to know how you're shooting, not what you're shooting on. So if you're handheld, you slow down the footage. If you're not handheld and you have stabilizers, you have that ability to do it in the natural flow of motion. Now it's all well and good to have amazing photos, but what you're gonna quickly realize is that everybody is good at editing and everybody knows how to edit. So quickly brush up on your Photoshop skills, your Lightroom skills, and your Premiere Pro skills. You can use any other software, of course, but these are my go-tos. With architectural photography, you can bring these images into Lightroom, edit them, and make them look so much better than they actually are. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. This video forms one of my 28 videos in 28 days. So it would usually be, I'll see you next Monday, but in this case, I'll see you tomorrow.